Hello, this is Dr. A, and I am going to show you today how to do a Metasploit attack using the auxiliary module SSH underscore enum users. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on the SSH login uh, attack, but it seems like people don't do the enum users very often, and you really should try and, you know, get the list of users down. Now, there's a lot of other attacks that you can do and I've, I've noticed online that it looks like there's a Python file that is available from ExploitDB that a lot of people are showing to use for this particular thing but you know um, it's in Metasploit uh, console and so today I'm going to open that up and I'm in Kali by the way this is the 2001 I think point two and I'm going to use this um, auxiliary and you can use the tab completion there. For scanners, SSH and SSH underscore enum users. And I have to set several things. Now, if, you, if you're not familiar with the options, you can always, okay, show the options and it'll list that there. And of course, I need to set a few things like the remote hosts. So, um, and everything that is required there, the only one that really I need to set is remote host, but we will set some other ones as you will see. Um, so I'm going to set our host to 172.16.0.121. That's a local one that I have running. And I'm going to do a couple of other things. I need to set the users, the list of users that I want to check. That I want to, I'm going to enum all of these and see which ones are correct. So I'm going to set the user file um, to be this. Uh, this is, by the way, this is right from the uh, built into Kali, so it's already here. So user slash share, but you can download yours, of course, wherever you want. Um, and this one is specific to Metasploit, and it's a name list dot text. So I'm just going to use that one for now. I am going to set the threads. Um, th threads. I do spell that right. Threads to 25. Um, you'll notice that's right now threads is just set to one, so we're going to do some multi uh, threaded stuff here. And uh, this is one, this next one that I need to set is one that is not talked about very often. And that is the very first one actually on here is not required, um, but this is to check for false positives. Uh, and if you don't do this, uh, you'll have this issue where it just lists that it found everything. And so I do need to set the check uh, false to true. <laughs> kind of an odd way to do that, but that's what we have to do. And um, there's a, I, I went back and I looked at the source code for this one, and it you'll notice that it says in here, there's this kind of cryptic note at the end that says, you know, tests show the inverse of what you're expecting, blah, blah, blah. And, and it says YMMV, your mileage may vary. So um, it took me a little bit to figure out um, that we do need to set this check false equal to true because if you don't, it just lists everything. And uh, there's also uh, one other thing. I'm going to show actions because um, You'll notice it says right now that the action, auxiliary action, is the malformed packet. Use the malformed packet method. And there are two. There's a malformed packet and there's also a timing attack. So I'm not going to change it because the malformed packet one is the one that works against the server that I am using. Uh, and so if I wanted to, I could set the action equal to timing attack. Okay. And it, I know that's kind of weird that you have two words right after there, not in quotes or whatever, but that's the way you do it if you want to change it. I'm not going to do that. The last thing that I'm going to do is I want to save all of this stuff out to a file. So I'm going to turn the uh, spooling to an external file on. So I'm just going to say, hey, this is going to go out to um, users, uh, no, 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 home, sorry, home slash Scott slash console dot log, okay? And uh, doing that will then save all that output to that file. 
So we're just going to hit enter on that. That'll start the spooling. Um, I am going to go up here and do a tail dash f console dot log. And you'll notice that I'm, I'm spooling to a file. That's, that's actually part of that. And at this point, I can do run. And the run will actually start to scan and, and get it running. And I'm going to pause here so you don't have to wait for this to finish because it takes a couple of minutes. And we skip to the end. And we've got them all here. And I've got this all uh, running in here. I do need to um, change my spool to be off. You can see it's uh, showing up right there in the file. But after I do that, then it's spooling is disabled and it quits. So I can... Control C out of this. And um, at this point, I want to sort of extract that. Now you can see I have everything is in single quotes here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to cap my console, console.log through um, cut dash S. And S will skip lines that don't have the delimiter, which is going to be, and it's, obviously it's remembering what I did last time. Um, so I'm using the single tick as my delimiter, and I want the second field because there are only three fields in in here that are delimited with the the single tick. And I'm just going to go ahead and send that out to user list dot text. And when I do that, now I can cat user list user underscore list. Whoa, can't type list uh, dot text, and I can see that there they all are. And now I can use this list uh, as the definitive list to attack. And so instead of just going whole guns at a server, not knowing which users you're trying to log into are actually going to be correct, uh, I can significantly um, reduce the amount of time and effort and uh, you know lower my visibility. Because if you have a you know, user list, Okay, the size of a user list. Sorry about the math here. For those of you who are not used to that, that would be the size of the user list. And I'm going to try a bunch of passwords. So I have a password list. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the user list times the password list sizes. And, you know, if I have uh, a thousand usernames and, you know, a million passwords, then I'm going to do a billion tries. But if I have a million passwords and 14 users that I know exist, I'm only going to do 14 million attacks or tries to figure out if I can log into these. So anytime you can reduce that user list size down, you're way better off. And uh, that's what you should use this for. So um, again, not a lot of videos out there on how to do this particular step in the Metasploit framework console. So I thought that would be interesting for people out there today. And uh, we'll see you again another time.